And now let's move on to the main focus of our presentation. It's Dmitry Serov, the CEO and president of American Airs. Founder, CEO, and president of the company, Dmitry Serov is responsible for day-to-day -day operating activities that include overseas manufacturing, marketing, sales, and distribution. Dmitry holds a diploma from St. Petersburg's College of Economics and Business Management, which he obtained in 2003. Mr. Serov has held various sales and executive management positions in the automotive sector with BMW, Mercedes-Benz, and Audi. And Dimitri's involvement with the technology has been instrumental in facilitating the adaption of the original AIRS technology into its current consumer-oriented form. Now, we had Dimitri on the webinar last on June 22nd, so I'd like to invite him on now to tell us a little bit more about how the company has evolved and what they're looking forward to on the horizon. So, Dimitri, I'm going to pass things over to you. Thank you, Jordan. Can you hear me? Yes, coming through loud and clear. Fantastic. Hello, everyone, and thank you for your time today. Um, my name is Dimitri. I'm the CEO of American Aries, and I would like to take you over the presentation today, uh, tell you more about our company, what exactly we are doing, and more importantly, uh, where we are taking this company in 2021. Uh, once we finish, I would love to answer all your questions. and. Uh, we try to spend a little bit more time on Q&As, uh, as uh, I'm sure you may have a lot of questions coming forward. So American Aries is a nanotechnology company. We have developed uh, EMF modulation technology. This brand was established, this company was established in 2012 with a direct to e-commerce uh, sales model. The product designed to reduce the harmful effects of electromagnetic radiation emitted by data transmitting devices, such as cell phones, cordless phones, wireless earpieces, wireless headsets, computers, laptops, monitors, smart TVs, baby monitors, Wi-Fi routers, and more. Ares has centralized manufacturing in Europe and global distribution network to service customers worldwide. Next page, please. Our company has spent over 10 years developing this technology. We have spent over $20 million US in research and development to come up with this technology and to adapt it for direct to consumer. Uh, the current product lineup that we are offering has high margins, 60% and up. And uh, what's important to mention as well that uh, in 2011, the World Health Organization has classified radio frequency as a group B cancerogen. And the group B cancerogen is the same um, as tobacco, as asbestos, uh, engine exhausts, just to name a few. Next page, please. Uh, the technology uh, has um, over 50 scientifically significant research papers available on our website. We have eight peer reviewed research papers that also available on our website. They're scientifically significant that were peer reviewed. There are eight studies confirming the effectiveness of the product. We also have um, four uh, peer reviewed publications in academical journals uh, confirming the effectiveness of the product. Uh, all the research papers and all the reports and all the peer reviewed papers are available uh, on our website under the technology section. Next page, please. Next page. Uh, one more this yes uh, so uh, what's uh, important to mention that the exposure to electromagnetic radiation uh, is a global concern we have highlighted a few uh, bullet points here uh, as you can see um, california warns about cell phone exposure and health risks as i mentioned before international agency for research on cancer has classified radio frequency electromagnetic field as possibly cancerogenic to human and uh, the Huffington Post uh, use of cell phone links uh, with the brain cancer in massive study out of Sweden. Today, uh, once a week, there is a research or report comes out confirming the negative effects of accumulative uh, electromagnetic radiation emitted by our um, uh, daily used electronic devices. Uh, next page, please. More than 250 scientists have urged the United uh, Nations to help uh, the rollout of 5G. This happened uh, this year in 2020 in the summer. Switzerland helps rollout of 5G over health concerns. Once the global 5G network is established, exposure levels will be increased up to 1,000%. 
Hawaii to seize development of 5G infrastructure. And there are many, many, many countries right now uh, concerned about the cumulative effects of electromagnetic radiation and uh, they're actively looking for solutions to reduce this exposure. Next page, please. Uh, what's important to understand all these articles and all these uh, resolutions uh, and petitions, they were mainly related to the current telecommunication technology called the LTE, is the 4G as we know. But what happens that we know that uh, 5G being deployed worldwide right now, and with the deployment of the 5G, the Internet of Things will be born. So we all heard about the Internet of Things and we all understand what it is. Uh, this jacket will be connected to the Internet once this uh, network is established. So uh, there is an estimate that by 2025, there will be 41.6 billion electronic devices connected to the Internet. And this represents our market shares. We uh, will be targeting all these daily use electronic devices to be equipped with our technology. Uh, next page, please. Just to sum up the first part of the presentation, uh, we have invested over 20 million in research and development. Uh, we have a complete product of line up addressing all day-to-day uh, -day electronics and uh, um, different uh, devices uh, that can utilize our technology independently tested and peer-reviewed, 11 patents and 14 patents are pending. We have proprietary manufacturing process, intelligent property in US, Canada, and the European Union. And uh, from here, I would like to introduce our CEO, Jan Neymer, uh, to go over the distribution and operation. Jan? All right, okay, perfect. Well, good evening, everyone. Thank you for having us. Uh, thank you for InvestorCube to organize this uh, webinar. And thank you to Danny for the wine. I opened the bottle and it's actually delicious. So thank you very much. I will, um, I'm the CEO of the company, American Airs. Joined the company in uh, November last year. And since November, I feel like we did so much. And uh, I would like to uh, share with you a little bit of information about what we did in the last uh, 10, 12 months, and more importantly, where are we going in 2021. So in 2020 was a very important year for us in a way that we build an infrastructure for the company uh, to be able to handle volume in sales. So the, the product was already developed. The product was already introduced to the market, but what we're missing here is how can we go by selling the product in a bigger volume and have access to a bigger audience? So first things comes, we decide to establish and build an infrastructure. So we build an infrastructure, which is an IT infrastructure. We use the software named Zoho, which is kind of a Shopify for some people who know Shopify. Shopify is a very simple tool. Zoho is a more sophisticated, and a more like a medium size, middle market companies. And uh, that's what we use. Zoho has different modules, a little bit like, you know, all the ERP solution like SAP and Oracle. It's a little bit smaller than SAP, but that's the same idea. So we decided to implement Zoho for our uh, inventory management, uh, Zoho for our CRM in relation with our customers. And as an e-commerce, these components are very important and the inventory, the relation with our customers, how we communicate with our customers, marketing, promotion, how we can link our website with any kind of marketing initiative and make sure customers will be delivered on time and we can follow that. So we, we implement our Zoho management, sales, CRM inventory management. When we had this uh, infrastructure in place and live, which it came in Q2 in 2020, now we were able to open the company to e-commerce really, not only on our website, but also we open all the platform, all the online platform. And that's when come all the platform like Best Buy, Amazon. So we were focused on Canada first, just because it's, it's easier to test the market. And uh, we you know, prefer to work in Canada. The, the product was 
warehouse in Canada. We're able to ship in less than 24 hours. And that's how that was the starting point. As soon as we were able to generate a significant amount of sales on these two platforms, we realized, okay, we have to go one step further. And we decide to open the door to influencers, affiliate. So for some people who knows the market with affiliate, it's, it's a very interesting uh, business model because these affiliate who have influencers um, are working like a sales force. It's people all over the world who decide to endorse our product and decide to talk about our product to the audience. So these people communicate through social media. So Facebook, Instagram, on the side of that, we reinforce the message with some Google ad that these people have access to and everything land on our website. The website is connected to Zoho and that's how we are able to ship our product, receive the money through different you know, payment tools, you know, such as PayPal, Cezor, Stripes and so on. So the, 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 we complete at this stage, the e-commerce transaction with the complete structure um, of selling online our product. We are able to receive orders, pick, ship, receive the money and carry on on the inventory management. Next slide, please. Okay, so after we finish this part, we decide to open the door to way more platforms. In order to do that, we implement a new layer between Zoho and our website, and we implement a software, the company named Channel Advisor, which is a massive company in, uh, in, in the United States. And what they do, it's a, it's a content management. So if we have to sell our product and we want to change a price, a comment, a new product coming up, uh, add a new pictures, add a new video, and the product is you know, for sale in 20 platforms, every platform has their own rules and regulations. So if we don't want to do that, we can use a, a, a software like Channel Advisor, which is technically a, a layer on top of the hub. And this Channel Advisor is connected to platforms. So we implement Channel Advisor and as soon as that was live, we were able to have access to Kmart, Sears, eBay, of course, Amazon in, in United States uh, after we had Amazon in, in Canada. So now we are able to manage, and we'll talk about that later. If we launch a new product, we can launch the product in a very short period of time. It, it's just a matter of hours or days and all the platform we have the same information we are also entering in some, you know, very interesting period, as, as you know, which is, you know, Black Fridays and Cyber Mondays and Christmas. So it's very important for us to be very reactive and working with affiliate, working with this platform, we need a, 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 a content management software to help us to be very, very um, um, quick when we uh, decide to change something. The following step was uh, the recognition from Amazon as an uh, exclusive vendor. So we were very happy and very proud to be an Amazon Prime. So today you can go on Amazon, either .com or .ca, whatever you, uh, you live in the United States or in Canada. And if you say Amazon.ca, for example, and you can uh, type our product and you can buy it. So to be Prime is very important and has two components. Number one is the recognition from Amazon. Number two, it's also what we call FBA, fulfilled by Amazon. That means the product is shipped from an Amazon warehouse. The consumer doesn't pay for the shipping. And because it comes from an, uh, an Amazon warehouse, it's shipped right away. The same day, usually you deliver the second day or the day after. And if you are an Amazon customer, you know exactly how it works. People only decide to, to, to check prime products and you're on the list or you're not. And there is nothing you can do to be on the list if you wanted to. You can give them as much you want this is not the way it works. You need to sell the product. If you sell the product and nobody's complaining about it, now Amazon recognizes you as a prime vendor. And that's what we are at the moment. So that was done. Uh, Q3, which is what we, we start uh, uh, this summer, we decide to work on opening other uh, warehouses. So we have a warehouse in Toronto and we were shipping to uh, pretty much everywhere in the world. We went one step further and we outsourced the warehouse. We opened a fulfillment center. 
which is also in, in Toronto for now. And this fulfillment center handle our product, is doing the picking, the shipping, and uh, able to uh, send the product all over the world to our customers. What we are doing right now is opening all the warehouses. The next one will be in Chicago in, uh, in the United States. And after that, it will be probably in, in the Q1 next year in Europe, and, but we'll talk about that later. So fulfillment center is a very important component in our business model. Because when the product, uh, when we receive an order from a customer, if the customer is in Europe, ideally it's better to ship from Europe. If it's a customer living in the United States, ideally it's better to have a warehouse in the United States. If we have that infrastructure in place and we will have that pretty much in each region, which is Canada, US and Europe, very, very soon, probably before Q2 next year, we are able to ship in less than two days and nobody's paying tax and duties and everything is in the same currency. So it's so much easier for the consumer and so much easier for us. So that's what we did. The, the last step I want to talk about is the recognition also of our uh, products and uh, be able to, to, to trade our stock market on the US platform, the OTC, and also on the Frank Frankfurt trading uh, market facility. Next slide, perfect. So here we are now, Q4, and uh, we're very proud to uh, talk about our new line of product. So this new line of product has been designed and Dimitri had uh, worked on that for uh, the last uh, uh, several months. This, this product is uh, similar to what we have today, except it's a 5G compatible. As everybody knows, all the cell phones and all the new technology now is all 5G. Not everybody has 5G signal, not everybody has a 5G phone, but eventually everybody will. So it was very important for us to be 5G compatible. So uh, we're very proud to launch our 5G line of product. Two products will be available. We're talking about hours now, probably before the end of the week. Uh, you will be able to go on our website and buy our product, the new one, which is the 5G, and we'll talk about it a little bit later. Uh, this is the same uh, EMR protection, uh, except we, can, we are 5G compatible. There is another product that we also launching and it's a very interesting uh, uh, product for us. We are launching the first, because nobody has that yet, uh, the first EMR protection for pets. Pets is a huge market. Uh, this market is growing exponentially. And uh, we're very excited actually to get into this new market uh, with a product to protect the pets. We had a lot of customers who contacting us and say, okay, I bought that for my phone, I bought that for my computers, I bought that for my house, in the, in the living room, in the bedroom, but what do I do for my pets? I mean, if you have a pet, you know what I'm talking about. We love our pets the way we like our kids. So how can I buy something to protect myself, my wife, my kids, my partner, my family, and I cannot do it for my, for my pets. And I, this, that was not right. So uh, we are very proud and very happy and excited, to be honest with you, to get into this new market. So that also will be launched uh, probably in the next uh, few days. So basically that's what we, we wanna end uh, this year with the launch of the new line of product and uh, launch the, the line, uh, this new product for pets. Um, just gonna talk about quickly about how we see 2021 and I, uh, I will probably have Dimitri interact if you wanted to as well. But 2021 is a very interesting year for us. We build the infrastructure, we launch our product, we're very solid. Our infrastructure uh, allow us to go up to a thousand order a day, 400,000 orders a year. And that's how strong our IT infrastructure is. This is how strong our partnership is. We can send a thousand order with our partner fulfillment center. We also have an agreement, I, I forgot to mention that before, with UPS, which is uh, our preferred partner. We are able to ship our product anywhere in the world, anywhere in the world, and deliver the product in less than three business days for less than $15 Canadian. And that's the agreement that we have with UPS worldwide. So this is what we have and we build up. What we want to do now is go after more platforms in US reinforce our presence in the North American market, and of course, launch the pets. The pets market in Canada, it's important, but in the US, it's massive. 
massive. We're talking about, I mean, thousands and thousands and of, of millions of pets and people are, they are doing anything they can to look after the pets and please their pets. So we're very excited to get to this new market. Next, perfect. So as I said, what, we, what we're planning to do for next year is we want to duplicate our marketing strategy into the European market. We know how it works. We have all the metrics working with you know, amazon.ca, working with amazon.com. It's very easy for us right now to expand our business strategy into the European market and also to the Asian market. The Asian market is extremely dynamic right now. We have a lot of demand from there, but we, we need to get into it. So the beauty of e-commerce is we can open a market in matters of weeks. I don't need to have necessarily talk to a distributor. I don't need to do anything. I don't need to ship inventory or anything like that. I can ship for wherever I am. If I have a warehouse in Asia or I have one in Europe, it's good. But if I don't, I ship today everywhere in the world. And customers are receiving our product in less than three days already. So if I open a warehouse in Europe, I don't know, in Germany, for example, that's easier because now I can do less than three days. I can do 24 hours. I can be prime. So can we open an Amazon in Germany, in Italy, in Spain, in France, in Switzerland? That's what we want to do next year. Same thing in Asia. Who are the, 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 the major players of the online? What is the equivalent of Best Buy, Staples, Costco, Walmart? That's the people we want to get into. And of course, on the pet market, how about pets value, pet smart? And that's, that's the platform we want to go after. So this is the project that we have for next year. I mean, ultimately, we want to sell our product on as many platforms as possible, have access to as many audience as possible. Of course, I mentioned the affiliate partnership that we have. So we have influencers right now in North America, and these people are selling our product through the audience. Of course, we want to duplicate the same thing as well. So we will have affiliate and influencers in Europe, and each country will have their own selection. So we we already have, you know, uh, we approached some marketing company in Europe who are pretty much doing the same thing as what we do in North America. Contact them, have an agreement with them and see what they recommend for sell, to sell the product. And that's the strategy for next year. At the end of the year, what we would like to entertain is potentially approach some OEM solution. So go after people who are manufacturing microprocessor and uh, not go to see, you know, Apple or Samsung and say, well, you're selling a phone and maybe we, we can partner together so the phone will reduce the radiation. And this is not our strategy. Our strategy is to work with company like Intel or Foxconn who manufacture the components for the phone and say, okay, in your next microprocessor, how about to integrate our new technology? And now these people will sell to all the cell phone manufacturer, computer manufacturers, and Wi-Fi rotors manufacturers, because that's the technology that they need in order to launch a new product, something with a better technology. That will probably take, take place at the end of next year. But uh, we, in, our strategy is to go with the consumer adoption. We want to make sure that there is, there is a demand, customers like the product, and we can sell the product. When we have this consumer adoption, we know there is a market for it, and we know it's real, it will be much, much easier to approach this big enterprise company and say, okay, you know the market, we know who we are, you know who we are, so let's make a deal and let's make a partnership. And that will take another probably uh, nine to 12 months from now. Next. Okay, perfect. So I'm gonna let uh, uh, Dimitri talk about uh, the sales and the revenue for the past three quarters and going forward, how is uh, EC at the end of the year? Thank you very much, Jan. Can you hear me? Fantastic. So thank you very much again, Jan. Um, so uh, what the, before I go and discuss the current sales, and um, I wanted to mention uh, uh, one more thing that is very important for everyone to understand. Originally, uh, my vision was to take the technology and straight out of the gate, go and try to include it, uh, put it uh, OEM go enterprise and um, supply the technology to this big uh, 
component manufacturers, the semiconductor manufacturers. So they going to sell the product uh, already with their solutions to these giant companies that they have uh, as customers. And uh, I realized that uh, that's not going to be easy to do. I could, you know, do it quickly. Maybe it will be longer. Maybe it's going to take years. So I, I spent some time and, and, and I realized that the best approach here is to take a step back, take the technology, roll it in direct to consumer application into a consumer product, build a lineup of products and go spend two years selling it, try to grow it to worldwide sales. And then once uh, the mission accomplished, once we are out there and we became a brand for electromagnetic radiation protection and uh, we have consumer adoptions, I certainly, uh, I 100% know that I will be able to um, put it in into OEM, uh, and that's going to be uh, happening. As uh, Jan already mentioned, we're going to specifically target these partnerships um, at the end of 2021. Having said that, we already had a, were approached by two companies. I can't mention names at this moment, but we already have some interest from. Uh, other companies that produce electronics uh, that already um, in discussion with us uh, what can be done, how our technology can be placed into their devices uh, by default. And um, once we uh, succeed and once we have this technology uh, and, and we we'll be able to go um, to OEM, we will not stop the e-commerce business no matter how many partnerships we have. We will split the business and we're gonna have two ways of commercialization. We'll have direct to consumer uh, market uh, and uh, sales worldwide uh, selling uh, this technology, these devices to customers around the world that don't necessarily have a, a product that has our technology built in it by default. And that's going to be one way of commercialization. And we will continue upgrading our product lineup, uh, do upgrades, uh, retarget our customers, uh, come up with new models, um, updated technology and the function of marketing. And together with it, we will uh, supply uh, the technology to, to, to the, uh, uh, through the OEM to enterprise companies um, whether it's going to be a, license, a technology licensing uh, uh, agreement or is we going to supply them our microprocessors directly. Um, so yes, yeah, so the goal is to have um, direct-to-consumer uh, business and uh, integration through OEM into enterprise companies. And that's where we're going. So uh, let's uh, just uh, go quickly here about uh, the sales for uh, the current year, um, before I, I, I go over the numbers, what's important to, to mention that um, we only focus to sell the product in one country. Yes, we have orders globally from Brunei, from Singapore, from Kuala Lumpur, from India, from Air Riyadh. Uh, every day we have orders from European Union and many, many, many other countries around the world. But these orders are, are organic orders. We not uh, we're not targeting these customers. We're not running any marketing campaign. We're not sending them ads. We're not working with affiliates or uh, influencers. We don't do anything to sell the product in area, but area buys product almost weekly from us organically. They're able to find us online uh, through Google, through search engine optimization. We only served some marketing uh, and we only put effort um, to be honest with you, we just scratched the surface in the United States. And as you can see, we are most likely going to finish the year with about three and a half million dollars in sales. And what's important, important, important to notice here um, uh, at the graph, uh, so we are comparing our sales 2019 with 2020. And uh, you can see that 2019, Q1 of 2019 versus uh, Q1 of 2020, the sales were increased 360%. Uh, in Q2, uh, 2019 versus 2020, the sales were increased 500%. Uh, and then Q3, uh, and as you can see, every quarter is a record quarter. Q Q1, record quarter. Q2, record quarter. Q3, uh, it is a record quarter as well. Um, 
we, we, we break all the records. And as a matter of the fact that in Q3, we have sold more product the entire 2019. And now uh, going, and that was over 500% sales growth uh, in Q3. And then now we're going into Q4, which is the strongest quarter of the year uh, in, in e-commerce, in sales, uh, and we anticipate to do um, slightly over 500% uh, again. So we will finish the year uh, uh, at around, you know, three to three and a half million dollars in revenues. But uh, again, the focus of 2020 was to develop the infrastructure, to finish development of the 5G products, to build the 5G product and to launch them. And we actually going to launch some product tonight. Uh, hopefully by the end of the day, they will go live on the website and we start shipping them. Uh, and then their other two products will be followed next week or so. So, and, and uh, next year, we're going to take this uh, to European Union. And it's also uh, important to mention that we manufacture our product in European Union. The microprocessors are made in Belgium, uh, near, uh, in, in Brussels, uh, actually near Brussels in a huge company. Uh, it's a, a gigafactory for semiconductors. The company who manufactured this microprocessor is called ON Semiconductor. They're listed on NASDAQ under symbol ON, a multi-billion dollar market cap company. They manufacture using our technology, uh, they manufacture the microprocessors in Belgium. And then the assembly and the other components, most of it made in European Union, final assemblies in, in European Union. Uh, so to sell the product in Europe, uh, we will be able to dramatically increase, increase the revenues because we're gonna be selling in euros. It's gonna be the same dollar amount, the same figure, uh, but in, in euro. Uh, so we're gonna make 30, 40% more just by, by just, just there. Plus we, we will not need to send the product uh, and pay duties and HST and uh, move it around the planet. So for European Union, we will ship straight from our assembly facility in Vilnius, uh, Lithuania to all European Union countries. We also gonna take it uh, further. We're gonna take the product to Southeast Asia, to Middle East, um, and uh, we definitely gonna launch it in South America. So what you see here, this 500, more than 500% growth compared to 2019 was achieved while we just scratched the surface in one country. A, B, it was achieved. We were not even focusing on selling. We, we just were focusing mainly on developing the infrastructure and launching the product. We did some mistakes. We learned on them. We now know how the product sells. We understand the metrics. We, we, we see a coin machine here and we will just replicate it uh, uh, worldwide. And the timing will be very, very fast because being an e-commerce company uh, versus a brick and mortar company, for us to open up European Union, Jan mentioned a few weeks, I disagree with it, it's gonna be a lot faster than that uh, because the product assembled there and uh, you go online. So <laughs> you just translate the content to European, uh, to German, French, Italian, Spanish, which we're going, we're going to do next month, the translation starts and we just launch everything there. We will partner up with a marketing company. We'll share the data that we already achieved, we already accomplished all the metrics. We're gonna give it to them so they don't need to spend a year learning how to sell it. And we're just gonna pick up uh, right away. So the goal is 2021, go worldwide. Uh, well, maybe not worldwide, but European Union, uh, South America, Middle East, Southeast Asia, uh, with our uh, newly uh, developed and uh, newly, well, now we're launching the, 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 the new um, 5G products. And uh, finally, uh, with enough consumer adoption, which I feel we're going to uh, be able to generate uh, next year, we will go OEM. Um, so that's, uh, that's, uh, that's the plan. And uh, I, I, I'm very confident that, that these plans will be achieved. Uh, next slide, please. Next slide. And one more. Uh, yeah, so um, here is a, a capital structure. I'll just go um, over a few um, points here, what's important for you to know. So as you can see, the base six shares outstanding, there are 115 million shares outstanding. Uh, we uh, have about uh, 20 uh, million uh, shares, um, um, uh, sorry, warrants um, that uh, will be expired um, in uh, 
in January, they will be expired. We had uh, some early warrant exercise uh, in the last few months. We were we exercised over 6 million warrants already. Uh, and this uh, balance is left and it will be either exercised or it will be expired in, in, in January. Uh, what's also important to understand that uh, I personally own uh, around 40%, just shy of 40% uh, of, uh, of the shares out there and approximately other 20% uh, of the shares uh, held by uh, very close people, insiders and uh, family, friends and family. So uh, the public float is uh, way less than uh, 115 uh, million shares. So um, we, uh, we had our highs, uh, I think we hit the bottom um, th this, at the beginning of this month, uh, the bottom was 15 cents. Uh, as Neil mentioned, uh, we uh, went through all these uh, uh, cheap papers and escrow releases, they're all gone. So I clearly see that uh, we, uh, we are established now and from here we only can go one way, which is uh, going up back to our uh, um, um, highs uh, 70, 75 cents and hopefully exceed, uh, exceed uh, this uh, and go to, 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 to a dollar or slightly over. Uh, yes, and uh, I uh, think this is it uh, in terms of the presentation. Uh, what uh, we can do, uh, we could go over some questions. I would like to answer some technology questions uh, uh, if you have any. And um, Jan can handle the uh, uh, distribution uh, and operation uh, uh, related questions if you have any. Perfect. So, Thank you so much, Dimitri. Um, I'm going to bring Jan back on here. Um, and then we can start the Q&A portion of the presentation. So we have the Q&A section. If you look up the menu at the webinar, you can see that there. So feel free to ask yep. any questions that you have in that location. And then if uh, Dimitri and Jan, you're ready, we have some questions that are already coming in. So are you ready? Yes, please go ahead. All right, here we go. Um, question here, does the older product for the 4G have any efficacy in the 5G world that's coming? So good question. So uh, th this this technology, the EMF modulation technology, is able to uh, the current product lineup, the 4G product, uh, is somewhat effective with 5G, but not the millimeter waves. Uh, not uh, so people getting confused. Uh, what is 5G? Most people don't even understand that it's a all new technology. It's not similar to what we currently have. Um, for example, you will not see uh, this um, cell phone antennas anymore. Uh, especially when we're gonna launch millimeter waves, this is gonna be Wi-Fi uh, um, instead of antennas, there will be transmitters and they will be in a very close proximity to us. They gotta be not further than 400 feet away from the device that you're currently holding in your hand. So, uh, and, and it's way beyond that as well. So the current product lineup that we are offering uh, is effective with the 5G, but uh, the 5G that you can see right now on your cell phone, there is no millimeter, millimeter wave 5G in Canada right now. You can see if you bought a new iPhone, like I have a brand new iPhone, just picked it up. I have 5G, but it's not um, 28 gigahertz. It's not 30 gigahertz. It's uh, just a, lit, a little bit, uh, uh, just close to four, four, four gigahertz. Uh, uh, it's slightly, uh, fa slightly faster than the current technology. So the product that we have on the website right now will be effective with uh, the 5G centimeter waves, but not the millimeter waves. The new product is designed for uh, 5G millimeter waves, and it will work on all bandwidths, go down to 4G, 3G, and um, any electromagnetic uh, field, any electromagnetic uh, emission. Perfect. Um, do you have any financial guidance as to when do you expect to be cash flow positive? And in the meantime, are you expecting any cash flow issues? Yes, thank you. Uh, looks like we're going to be cash flow neutral this or early next month and uh, cash flow positive by the end of uh, by the end of December, we don't have any issues in terms of cash. Uh, we did spend uh, quite a bit of money, uh, but this this is not an overhead. Uh, we spend money to develop the IT infrastructure. It's these projects are finished. Uh, they're done. We don't need to do it anymore. The 5G R&D, the 5G development, the 5G assembly, uh, you know, it's all already been paid for. 
Uh, so if any one of you will ever look, uh, I, I will, of course you will, but you will see numbers uh, spending. This spending is in the past. Uh, we have revenues coming in. We sell products every 15 minutes, every 20 minutes, sometimes every five minutes we have order coming in from somewhere. And, um, you know, we have days that we can generate you know, $50,000 a day. We have days that we can generate $20,000 a day, but we always, always generate revenues. And we get paid today and we ship tomorrow. So it's not like in a classic distribution when you supply the product, put it on the shelf, uh, before you get paid, you will starve to death uh, or you're gonna chase your money and wait 60 days or 90 days. That's not happening. E-commerce is different. You get paid tonight and you ship tomorrow morning. So uh, we uh, have uh, went through all the spending already. Right now we just uh, pumping, uh, and I, I already see we of course have cash flow forecasts and models, and we have daily cash flow, and we have uh, monthly, and we have uh, very sophisticated models, and uh, we have a CFO working with us, and my um, our chairman is assisting us daily. He has great experience uh, uh, in e-commerce world and managing uh, enterprise level companies, uh, helping us to, uh, to, to, to stay cash flow uh, and uh, to, to get into the cash flow positive. And yes, uh, the answer is we will get there by the, by the end of this year. Awesome. Um, do you have an estimate as to the money that was spent in 2020 on infrastructure and R&D? Of course we know what was spent. <laughs> Uh, these numbers are in the financial. Uh, I mean, I don't have, you know, up to the penny in terms of my head, but uh, I think this, this, this is better to look at the financial reports. Uh, we uh, did Q2, it's on our website. Q3 will be published this month. Uh, we may even have something out by early next week um, with you. Uh, the, we, we, have to, we have to file them uh, by the end of the month. So yeah, I, I will encourage you to to refer to the to the financials uh, for to get the exact figures of what was spent where perfect um, you had mentioned earlier on Dimitri about how on the airs website there are many peer-reviewed studies but you know there are people out there who are convinced that electromagnetic waves are not harmful or you know people who are saying the opposite so does airs have any initiatives that they're focused on trying to educate the public about the danger of electromagnetic radiation this is a good question and I want to answer it in a different way. I was in Santa Barbara presenting to a group of around 50 people. And the gentleman stands up and saying, hey, there is no way this technology is dangerous because if this technology will be dangerous, American government, our American government will never allow to have a Wi-Fi router in every house. And my answer to him was very simple. Your American government was allowing asbestos in every home 30 years ago, and no one called it a problem. Tobacco was fine. Everything was fine back in the days. But then time passes and they realize that these things are harmful. So I agree that some people don't realize the negative effects of electromagnetic radiation. But we are not trying to uh, you know, win 100% of population. At least 50% of the population, they do aware of the negative effects of electromagnetic radiation and specifically specifically the accumulative effects of electromagnetic radiation. For those of you that don't know, every cell phone has a hidden warning label. It's put, it's deep inside the operation uh, 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 in, in the OS uh, operation system. And every cell phone in the world has a warning label and they all say the same thing. To qualify to uh, rules and regulations, you need a 1.5 centimeter separation from your body, so you can't even put your phone in your pocket. And when you're speaking on this phone, you should use wireless, uh, sorry, wired headsets or uh, the uh, built-in speakerphone. Uh, World Health Organization came up with a resolution that it's a group B cancerogen. Uh, thousands of scientists write petitions and people know that this accumulative effect of electromagnetic radiation in the modern world is a big problem. Uh, not necessarily if I only go on, if I'm going to delete all your devices, I will kill it all. And I just going to put you in a desert with one cell phone. That is fine. But because you're bombarded 24 seven, no break 
from every corner, from every millisecond, you're being exposure to electromagnetic radiation, there is a very significant uh, health risk and issues. And of course, the worst case scenario is glioma, it's a type of a brain cancer. But uh, before that, there, 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 there are a bunch of uh, issues and especially for children. Uh, and this is a very, very big concern. And I'm 100% uh, uh, convinced that big, 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 big companies such as, uh, you know, the big electronic uh, companies already uh, having a lot of pressure and coming the day next year, a year from now, maybe this year, they're gonna be forced, they're gonna be forced to put some way of protection in these devices. We have patented our method. We never said that our method is the only method. We may have companies that have developed different solutions to tackle the same issue. But the idea is that, you know, Apple, Samsung, uh, Microsoft, uh, all these cell phone manufacturers, all these data providers, they will be forced to actually go and, and do something about about it because there are a lot of things can be done they educated people but they hide it uh, you may look into a uh, right to know audience from california uh, which uh, basically they're trying to the the past the, the past uh, um, a hearing uh, in the uh, over there in berkeley to elevate these warning labels and put them on top of the box because these warning labels people don't see so um you should just go out to your friends and family and ask the question, what do you think? Is electromagnetic radiation is an issue or not? And you will be surprised. I believe seven out of 10 people you're going to talk to will tell you, yes, I think it does affect our health. All right. Well, we have come up very close to five o'clock now. So I think we are going to close off the Q&A section here. Those of you whose questions weren't answered, we're going to collect those. We'll pass them back over to Dimitri and Jan, and then they'll probably get some answers back and we'll send those back out to all of you within the next couple of days. So before we wrap things up, Dimitri, Jan, do you have any uh, last words that you want to share with everybody who joined us today? I personally just want to say thank you for everyone who's been there and thank you for the time and for opportunity to present. Um, I, um, uh, I know that we have a tremendous opportunity here. Uh, no one in the world does what we are doing. You may run into some products claiming that they're protecting people from electromagnetic radiation. I want to tell you that 99% of these companies, they are holistic based homeopathic products, like they mainly natural elements. Uh, we develop a technology, we manufacture a semiconductor silicon chip. Uh, we have uh, a technology based on fundamental physics, and it's a device. It's not a piece of crystal or piece of uh, Himalayan rock or uh, pendant or something. So um, electromagnetic radiation uh, uh, is, uh, uh, the, the issues are real. Do your own research. Uh, with the 5G deployment, this is going to exceed uh, the current uh, levels by 1,000%. Perfect. Thank you so much, Dimitri and Jan, for joining us today. I'm sure everybody thank appreciates you. you for being here. And uh, thank you so much again for being with us. Thank you, thank very, you very much. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.